As greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fusov, and today we're making this video about insects, about entomology, about spiders, about invertebrates, animals which are living in your house, around your house, in the nature. And some people are really like these animals. It's very surprising, very surprising. And I'm inviting people who is just enjoying just the nature around us and who is careful about nature. So that's why I named this video stream as Entomology, Insects and Spiders Edict. What means edict, actually? Yes, for people who is just not familiar with in English. So we need to go to Collins Dictionary to read some synonyms. What about edict? Well, what is about edict? Edict, it means dope find, find, freak, head, junkie. This is a synonym. Junkie or just a user. And if you are addicted to something, you can say the same synonyms. You are just absorbed by something. You are accustomed by something. You are just dedicated to insects and entomology, or you can be dedicated to spiders, to dedicated to the study of biology of insects and spiders. Then you are just dependent from their beauty, from their behavior. You are just absolutely enjoying their style of life. You are just devoted to the study of insects and spiders and, and other invertebrates. You are disposed to them. You are fond of entomology and arachnology and archaeology. Well, you are habituated to study entomology. You are hooked by this subject of study. Entomology, arachnology, archaeology, biology and zoology. Well, you are inclined, you are obsessed by the study of entomology and acarology and arachnology. But some people hate spiders. This is arachnophobia and insectophobia. But we are not talking about them. We are talking about people who are addicted to insects, who love them, who like them, who are just obsessed, who are obsessed with their love to them. Inclined, you are obsessed. You are prone of love to insects or spiders or acari, acari, mites, ticks. Why? Very funny. Very interesting. Well, and addiction. What is addiction? Addiction is the same synonym. Craving, dependence, craving, dependence. Enslavement. This is habit of obsession. Obsession. Obsession by something, obsession, you are, can be obsessed by the beauty of nature. And entomologists usually obsessed by the beauty of insects or mites or spiders. And for making some records, I also need my dictionary of entomology. Yes, I have it here. Well, because I prepared the next dictionary, a dictionary of entomology, so to say about insects. So sorry, but this is just introduction for people. If you are gathering together to talk more about entomology, what means entomology? Entomology this is subdiscipline of zoology, which involves the study of insects. The term comes from Aristotle and Toma, which means bloodless animals, which is included insects, arachnids, meropods, and worms in his system of classification. The word entomon refers to the notched appearance of the body, which is created by tahmata and areas of articulation between sclerites. So the insects were just with many sclerites. So like this funny, you see, segments, many sclerites or segments. Entomology is divided to several professional areas. So we need to refer it. 
So this professional area is agricultural entomology, applied entomology, economic entomology, forensic entomology, very difficult one, insect morphology, insect pathology, medical entomology, taxonomic entomology or systematics, taxonomy, urban entomology, and veterinary entomology. And also we will say arachnology about spiders and acarology about acarian mites. And of course, some disciplines involved in agronomy and in the study of plants in, in the botany. Well, very, very wide discipline of entomology and how people become addicted, enslaved, obsessed, dedicated to entomology. For some people, it sounds like strange. Why to study insects, spiders, mites? Why? Because they're beautiful and interesting and amazing. And some entomologists becoming obsessed with their beauty. But of course, not all, not all, not all. Don't worry about it. Some people, as in any profession, just obsessed just by the style of life when you are just the scientist so such a such kind of freedom in mentality in time in your habits in, ex in scientific expeditions so some people like habitual work of entomology because this is field entomology this is work in a field in forest Near, near some ponds, lakes, sea, and so on, or in the laboratory, if this is, so you don't need to go to the field, you are just working in the laboratory. And some people, we say, working from 1905, but some entomologists were just addicted, they're obsessed, they're completely involved in the study of the subject. And why we started to do it? Well, why we became so obsessed? Because we became obsessed from the childhood. Yes, that's right. So, because when you're a child, you're small, you're smaller than adult, definitely, and all animals much closer to you. For some children, different animals, different animals, birds, lizards, snakes, are interesting, interesting. So we're interested to know more about nature. For some people, people, for some children, they're completely ignorant about it. So we say about insect lovers. We're talking about insects, addiction, addiction, obsession of insects. Because for children, it's very easy to find insect, very easy to find mirapod or just diplopoda. A very tiny worm, very tiny bee, very tiny beetle, and wash it just on the head, uh, put it on the head and observe it. And of course, if parents, if parents will talk about insects, about spiders, about ticks, freely, don't say, come on, just snatch it, just crash it, just snitch it. So people will think, Insects, spiders, ticks, some invertebrates were interesting, were surprisingly interesting. They were very unusual. They were living everywhere. They were just moving very funny. They were just flying very interesting, very funny, very fast, very fast. Very interesting to collect them. Very interesting to catch them. Very interesting to catch in the hand, maybe to try to smell. Sometimes insects smell strange. And it became from the childhood. And of course, if children will just listen to their parents about different insects like wasps, bees, bumblebees, beetles from the childhood. It will be very helpful for them to know more about different animals, about bumblebees, for instance. How do they live like? How bees live in like in the just beehive? So, People became more familiar about insects and will not worry about very strange ants, 
which we, people say, oh, ants, very disgusting, very disgusting. Worms, very disgusting. Many people hate everything which is moving. Very surprisingly, actually. But we are not talking about these people. We are talking about people who enjoy different animals, like this scholar wasp. This is not a bumblebee. This is wasp. Oh, this is crazy dida, crazy dida wasp. Yeah, big and very colorful. And of course, you will be very lucky to have different pictures and maybe even some toys like insects if you're a child. So you can play with a big insects like that or with small one like this on my poster. I distributed, put here with sticker some insects, not only this big one, we big one. These are my tiny parasitic wasps. They're tiny because here on poster they're big, but in reality they're very small, just uh, one millimeter up to five millimeter, it's very big. I'm studying them as a professional entomologist, so I study their taxonomy and identification, how to identify different very small insects using, and I use microscope. I'm making some, many, many, not some, just microscopic slides to look under the microscope, to make photos, to take photos, to make identification, and to write some scientific papers. This is a job of entomologist. But we start from the beginning, from the childhood. In the childhood, some insects come to you naturally, naturally, as I say, so where you, insects flying, and people becoming addicted and obsessed by their behavior. Because if you're coming to a kitchen, maybe, you're familiar with these beans? Yes, we're very familiar. And for children, it's also just a, it can be like a toy. But sometimes you open your beans and you see a lot of holes and you say, oh, so disgusting beetles. So disgusting be Some worms ate all my beans. So, so um, very, very bad words about these beetles. But to be honest, actually, if you keep them in this condition closed and you do not, not nothing, bees will come one by one and will eat everything inside because you made very suitable, very convenient environment for bees, not for bees, for beetles, for beetles here inside. So we we'll do like very much this stock and we'll eat it. You know, so this is bean beetles. Acanthus salides aptactus in Latin name will eat everything, everything. But for children, it's very funny because when there will be many beetles, we will crawl in everywhere around. So this is creepy crawly. We have only one we already hatched, but this beetle can escape even from this plastic jar. Just can cut here the rounded hole and can escape to the light to search for another beans somewhere in your stock, in your shelves, in your kitchen, or maybe go to the neighbors, or maybe to your field yard, or in the, to stock of your beans, and will lay eggs and will develop into the larvae, pupa, and then just no new beetles, and definitely will damage and eat your beans. So as I talking about in my different stories, keep it in a cold area or just put it in the freezer and all bean, Beetles will die. Sorry about that. But if you want to observe them, you if you want to look for their behavior, you just can keep it in these tiny small jars. And you can see how they are crawling, and you can change the food stock and to see how many of them will be developing in one bean. That's very interesting because knowledge about insects definitely will usually started with different books, as I said. If your parents will buy you or bought you just a big books like that. Sorry, this is a very colorful book, very easy to show you. It's easy to know more about insects, how we, about their morphology, about these bees. 
So this book of uh, Peter Socha from Poland and translated in, in several languages in, in a Polish, in a Russian, and this one in Ukrainian. In Ukrainian, bjoli, which means bees, honeybees, or just bees. So, of course, these books are very knowledgeable and interesting. So if you have children and you want to give them uh, some knowledge about insects, about nature in general, so buy some nice, interesting books, colorful. Of course, they're expensive. Of course, they're expensive. But you do not buy them uh, every day. Just so this is investment in the education of your children. So this will be improving the behavior, the knowledge, and maybe the future of life in the whole earth because people need, in it, need an education. Not only the culture, but culture is also education as part of culture. So here are some lot of different interesting stories about honeybees and some written stories of how Beekeepers producing bees, bees and producing honey, collecting honey, harvesting honey. So, be colorful pictures are very valuable. And so, you see how many beehives are very nice. And even how many beehives like sculptures, some people do it. And this is harvesting of honey just in a wild wild condition just like this in india if some people are watching me in india in nepal just you can write uh, down there just under the comments about collecting of if you know how your local people collecting the honey from trees for me it's amazing very interesting very funny very dangerous because people are usually not very Rich, so we use very poor protection against bees. So, so we are stung very much with bees. Despite we use some smell, we use some smoke, try to protect themselves with some leaves and smoke from from leaves. But still, we are stung. But we are collecting it because this is their money and their style of life. So we exchange it for food and another stocks. Yeah, so uh, that after that we will see here, this is a flowering tree because honeybees and other wild bees, very important pollinators. And to know more about the start, the start is in childhood, not only in in a school, because in school, usually a lot of discipline, but some people surprisingly, or not surprisingly, becoming addicted, becoming obsessed, becoming involved in the study of insects, spiders, mites, some strange uh, mirapods, uh, some uh, different invertebrates. Uh, actually, uh, many people like uh, big vertebrates animals, like cats, dogs, some sheep, cows, okay, all these animals in the backyard, in your field, in your field, near your house, especially in a village. But some very, I would say, observative, very careful people, children, men, kids, Boys and girls as well became very interested in insects, but in their structure because insects have a different structure. They are not like vertebrates; they are totally different. We have a body with an external skeleton, so we have a white colored hemolymph for in their blood. So. We have not closed blood circulation, so blood is coming out of them if you touch it. 
So some of them biting, some of them feeding on your food stock. So you can find them very often near your house, near and some, and it's very nice, very good that some children becoming interested in insects. For example, I also like to show this book with this picture. And this book is picture like this is Ladybird with boy and girl. And this is a book of young Larry, Adventures of a Karik and Valley, Valik, Karik and Valik, Karik and Valik. This is a book which was written in uh, old time, uh, I guess more than 40, 50 years ago. But in this book, a lot of interesting stories about this professor of entomology, who is just moving everywhere around because together with the children, because these children became very small. This is a story when children became, they drink, they drank just a special liquid and they became small like insects. Very, very tiny, very tiny microscopic children. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you can find this story in, even in the movies. There are several movies about adults who became just like uh, this very tiny, like insects with very small size, like ants, like flies. But this book was written 50 years ago without uh, great progress in uh, television and in movies and illustrated in that time so far like you see here. Let's see, let's see here. There's a big wasp and who, who is just carrying a tiny girl. Yeah. And this is actually a very nice book for reading for children. Jan Larry, this is a Soviet, actually, so you, a writer in the Soviet Union, yeah, but in, who was born in Latvia. So he is Latvian. And the book Adventures of a Karik and Valley is very famous for children who was born in the USSR because this. In that time, we didn't have too much children's literature, or, or at least uh, less than now. And informational clouds were less than that. And people were reading books, and writers were writing books. And the number of these books was huge, and many people liked to read books. Well, Adventures of Karik and Valley is a very interesting book. I am really in, in, advising you because professor also became very small. These are children, these wings of butterflies, and this professor, and these are children, both boy and girl. So they were traveling, and finally they became big bag, big bag, big, big size bag. So this, this is a happy, happy end story. So I'm not quite sure if this book were translated in English. Maybe, maybe. So if you are searching in internet, try to search for Karik and Valik. Karik and Valley and Valley, not Valley. Karik and Valley, Jan Larry writer. So I'm really advising you not only this book got to so high about bees, but also about Karik and Valley. So because Obsession of insects, obsession to of insects, and enjoyment of study of insects just started for many and professional entomologists in their childhood. In their childhood, so some entomologists, as I said, devoted to their subject not only from 9 till the 5, 9 a.m. till the 5 p.m. evening time, and then just were totally don't like the subject. Yes, yeah, some some people, some entomologists do not like their subject. Yes, to be sure, do not like even hate, because now this is a capitalism society. Some people like to receive more money rather than knowledge. 
rather than knowledge and just discoveries. And if discovery is not paid very well, what in the former USSR, uh, from where I have been, where I was born, and where I've been living for a long time, actually, to a present time in the post-USSR countries, entomology study paid um, not the same like, like in a bank, a commercial or in commercial firm. Well, but that's another story. Another story. And so some popular books also very important for creation of addiction, obsession, of enjoyment, of love and pleasure and search for discovery in the life of insects, spiders and other invertebrates. Because after the childhood, after the school time, some people who was interested in insect spiders and vertebrates and animals and in all pets all together in plants some of these children already not children already teenagers are going to the university becoming university students and then later some of them can be either teachers either just business workers or as a scientist maybe biologist maybe not biologist but still if we got some education, we got some knowledge and interest in biological subject like insects, spiders, mites, vertebrates, so we will be, know about this subject much more than others. And of course, in this time, very important to use some nice interesting books for instance for identification of insects because after the school and the last time last years of school it's quite interesting to search for correct names of animals whom you are observing whom we are watching so for that you can search you can buy you can find in the library as well or in the internet in some websites in internet even some free books but of course books so this is much better because book you can keep in hands you can move it more quickly and you can easily manipulate with book to search for different colorful pictures so because this book actually about different families of caterpillars of families butterflies Lepidoptera in Latin, like this huge butterflies. Or genus Lamptoptera, Raphium, Ornithoptera, Paradisea, Ornithoptera, Paradisea. These butterflies of paradise and different families so for that very convenient to buy and very important to buy uh, different identification books for identification of insects if you love butterflies you can identify using these colorful photographs and some description of in identification keys some of butterflies of course not all but basically at least family subfamily genus and you maybe some in some keys even species name can be possible identi to identify even with some colorful atlases like that devoted to butterflies or maybe to Beetles, for example, because the most common, the most common groups are beetles, beetles, and definitely butterflies. So, and all tiny, small. This is tiny mantis, spraying mantis. Here we can see some grasshoppers, some cockroaches, some grasshoppers. On my poster, some tiny, small. Or termites, termites, isoptera, 
yeah, with a big one. Others were very small, but they are in posture. Some form is seated just on the top, form is seated arms. Some beetles, coleoptera, lepidoptera. And who is here? Grasshoppers and dragonflies, Odonata. And all different books with identification keys can be very useful for you for identification. For example, this book, as I, I showed it many times already, this book with colorful and white and black photographs of different beetles. Because in, in a book, you can see some very nice, very colorful photographs. And it's creating enjoyment of nature. And it creates some creativity. Because for some people, it will give them encouragement, encouragement to create their own photos, or maybe surprise of the structure of these beetles will create the interest in to interest to study it, or for example, the surprise of these hairs of these beetles. Actually, a good initiation to study the surface of these beetles under the scanning microscope in the time of a university or after university. And of course, in using these books, you can see how many different insects collected in collections, in collections, in the museums, and for scientific collections, for scientific purposes. Usually uh, making collections for study morphology, taxonomy, systematics, and study also physiology to study behavior of insects, how we're creating the huge populations. And this is very important. And this can be useful very much, for instance, in agricultural entomology and creation of different methods, how to control some insects who are becoming dangerous pests for agricultural stocks. Oh, like this huge longhorn beetles, some of them really huge and uh, very attractive for nice private or governmental collection. Oh, some of them were interesting to study the life cycle inside rotten wood and to find some of the parasitoids from Hymenoptera. Or to study uh, different morphological features like eyes, like some seta, like some legs, like some sensilia on legs can be very, very important for the development of a biomorphology, biomimetics, biomimetics, it's called how to use different adaptations, which is used in insects and other animals for human beings. And studying some books, you can recognize how important to use this information for bioinformatics, how it's possible to keep now all this information is digitized, digitalized, digitalized information, digitalized for, for photos, not only on printed in books, but also in files in some databases, in computer databases. And this information can be freely collected and distributed for people. And how quickly you can show discover, you can find some discovery of other people in behavior, in morphology, in trophic relations between insects and other insects and in other vertebrates, or trophic relations with the plants, because many insects were developing like phytophagous insects, were eating, were feeding on many plants, which are our domestic plants, or they can be very dangerous for domestic plants, or we can destroy some weeds. And in that situation, 
some insects can make biological control of weeds or some dangerous plants in farm field, fields. And development of insects from egg to larvae to pupa is really huge subject for the study. This is uh, physiology and morphology changes and this process of metamorphosis just still keeping a lot of unstudied features, unstudied material because it's difficult to study this process of metamorphosis on different groups of insects. Some groups, this is even unstudied and how to control it, how to manipulate it, how to observe it on healthy pupil, larvae, eggs, and adults. It's very important physiological study. And even the study of some insects inside amber, here white and black, but originally these insects were in amber. If you are just lucky to have small pieces of amber, you are very lucky to have it because it can be useful for the study by scientists. But here you see some of insects alive. It's very important to use for photographs of live insects because they show the natural behavior, natural behavior, which is opening the life of life cycle, lifestyle, showing the trophic relations and how to study it. There are different methods for studying insects, definitely. As I showed you some photographs, very important to take photos of insects. And now we can go to methods of study in insects. For example, we can use small video camera to catch some behavioral features. You can use this camera like this, just don't break it, don't miss it, don't destroy it to catch some very, very important, very interesting moments of behavior of these, these, or these insects. And with this current style of technology, current level of technology, it's becoming easier and easier, especially with a huge big zoom. You can use it to manipulate, to zoom tiny insects, and insect will be big, and you can catch very tiny, unstudied before moments, details of biology, biology of phytophagous insects, or oh, the parasitoids like this, like these tiny parasitoids, unstudied, completely unstudied. And it's very important to study them because, for example, as I said, these tiny beans, you can collect in ho at home, but some beans uh, very widely distributed in a tropical, say, semi-tropical areas in such long, shorter pods. And some bean beetles laying eggs on pods. And many entomophagous insects, which are just on this picture, be, just behind of me, some entomophagous insects from the older Hymenoptera attacking these beetles. These tiny hymenopter parasitoids, tiny from 0 0.5 millimeter, half of millimeter up to one millimeter only, they attack larvae, or attack eggs of bee, bean beetles, just on beans or just on pods, just on plant. And if you collect plant, if you collect plant with beans, if you collect eggs of plants in tiny, mm, jars like in petri dishes like petri dishes in the petri dishes in some plastic tubes plastic tubes in some small containers small containers you can collect phytophagous insects and you can breed parasitoids parasitoids egg parasitoids larval parasitoids 
Aglarolex and pupil parasitoids, and sometimes even adult parasitoids, were all available in the world of a parasitic hymenoptera insects. And some of these insects can be new for science. Yes, some of insect collected rear it, rear it carefully in small jars can be new insect, new for science insect. What means rear it? If you are making some samples, some samples where you are keeping eggs, larvae of insects, like in these jars, from eggs, from larvae, from pupa of insects, can be these beautiful parasitoids rear it. And if you fix them, if you keep them and just dry or in alcohol, specialists like me or other entomologists can identify the scientific name of this parasitic insect. And to know parasit uh, name of parasitic insect, like uh, name of this old tiny small parasitoids is very important to know exact knowledge about biodiversity of parasitic insects or biodiversity of hymenoptera in the nature. And entomologists, scientific scientists on the basis of this material can publish exact scientific papers with indication of exact scientific name of this, this or that insect or parasitoid. You can watch on my channel how to breed, how to keep insects in different cages like that from these cages and how to breed them. So this is a tec technical entomology. You can keep insects, you don't need even kill them immediately, all of them, but you can keep them in jars like this from a milk, from a cream, from a milk, from cream, from these tiny plastic jars, from cheese. You can make here holes, put here some plants or some wood and keep, keep it. Or with this, for example, from cheese, polished cheese, is flattened with a small cover. Easy to put here a sample with plants, with some small tiny pieces of plants, with leaves, with wood, close it. And you can observe here through transparent plastic as well, from transparent plastic. And this observation can be very useful to make collection, collection of insects for the scientific study. So the next part after observation, observation in the nature, where you can take photos, where you can take videos, where you can record very special moment of biology of this and that insect. It's very important to take some of the insects at least, not all, maybe not hundreds, but some of insects for scientific collection, mm, fix them because, as I said, very important to make very correct identification of name of insects. Sometimes we will just a photo, it's not enough to make correct identification. Scientists need to watch under the microscope tiny insects because, for example, this insect very tiny, just one millimeter and less, very important to have tiny samples with a tiny inside plastic tubes, plastic tubes like that, with cotton, closed with cotton or closed with plastic, and if it is, will be with alcohol, so it can be dry, dry like that, or in alcohol, in this tiny jars like that, tubes, different kind of tubes, or this can be tube with a cap, with a cap, so it is closed carefully, very carefully, and put it inside another glass jar, especially very important to have a sample of insect and also the label, piece of paper, 
piece of paper which is named label with indication of a country, city, village, name of collector, plant of collection, where it was collected and date of collecting. So in this case, these tiny small pieces so will be very valuable. These small tubes with insects inside with indication of all data on the label will be very useful, very important scientific material for the study. There are a lot of different methods for collecting, as I showed in my previous video before. For example, for example, I have some samples collected in alcohol, um, in alcohol using different plates. So these plates are called yellow pen traps, pen traps, plates. These are tiny plates. We're filling these plates with water and with some drop of shampoo. And so, so they are called murica traps or yellow pen traps, easy to remember. So but if they are deeper, they're better. And so water, shampoo, and, and just one spoon, big spoon of uh, salt, common salt, natural flour, for one big bottle of uh, two liters, or one and a half liter, one spool of salt, for fixation of in insects. So you fill water with shampoo here and salt inside these plast plastic plates and put them just on soil, on soil, on, on, on stones near the river, near the lake, near the pond. Sometimes it's even possible to attach it to the tree, to a stem of tree, even put on the level of one meter, two meters, or even three meters and higher on the tree, together with a water with shampoo and insects I attracted by the yellow color. It's already proved by different studies that yellow color is the best. Sometimes not green, not white. Sometimes blue color is useful, but yellow is the best color. So insects will be flying, crowding, jumping, and all of them will just go through the surface of water with shampoo and dying, sorry about that, inside water with shampoo. And after that, you can use just a very tiny, very small aquarium net, net, aquarium net to collect all the insects together. All insects, you can collect them in, in a glass jars. Wash them, insects, wash these insects in a water in laboratory or just wash with fresh water without shampoo, clean them from shampoo and then fix them again. Fix them again, finally, in 70 or 96% ethanol alcohol for the next scientific study. And how it can be looked like, for example, if you collect it, this can be if they dry, so they die. So you see here, this insect probably destroyed because alcohol evaporated. But if insects collected properly and put here inside alcohol, we will be saved here for several years, for many years. If we put insects in a freezer or in a refrigerator, these insects will be saved a long time and some of them when I already selected some from big box into the small box. And here I'm writing the, wrote the label, material was selected because I need only small insects from this big jar with uh, different insects. So I selected the best, which are most important for me, special taxonomical group. So this is a method of collecting of insects in yellow pen traps and then put them in alcohol for following, following next taxonomical study and identification of insects. As I said, to know correct name of different groups of insects which were collected all together because inside yellow pen traps 
you can collect many different families, orders, groups of insect species. So I select only one and two or three separate families of Hymenoptera insects of small calcid wasps, which are here, my favorite insects are here, egg parasitoids, Trichoverama and Trichoverama tida family, egg parasitoids of beetles and butterflies. If you can collect eggs of beetles or butterflies and keep them in jars, tiny small eggs of beetles and butterflies, maybe some of cicadas, keep them inside jars. And after that, you can look carefully inside jars and you can find the tiny small insects hatched, emerged from eggs of their hosts. So this will be the most valuable material for my study. And I will be very pleased to share my knowledge with you to make identification for you species of Trichorama and other genera of Trichorama the family, or another egg parasitoids of uh, Calcid wasps, super family, super family Calcidoidae. Of course, for many different groups of insects, you still can use butterfly net. In for hymenopterists, people use the, the name sweeping net because we are sweeping, sweeping, just making some movements like sweeping. But some people do not understand what means sweeping net. Easier to say. Butterfly net. Butterfly net can be uh, short size or sometimes it's, it can be dismounted and it can be much bigger. It's becoming much big. And this is still not very big one. Some Japanese entomologists were used and some trop entomologists who are studying in butterflies in tropics. We use very, very, very long stick, very long stick, to move very fast, very quickly, to catch some more for some very tiny butterflies, very quickly, very quickly. So because this is a butterfly that also can be useful for collecting different groups of insects. And uh, as I said already, for creation of a scientific collection, scientific collection, and finally, I show you a little bit of collection because some people like to create just exposition of collection like this. So they collect some colorful butterflies, colorful beetles, or some people will just buy them on auctions in internet. But others using uh, different methods of collecting to, for creation of it. The amateurs or scientific collections, like with this cocoa, this is a big, uh, this is exposition for educational collection. I wouldn't say this is scientific collection, more educational for exposition to show different groups of insects. Like here, some beetles, carabi the beetles, carabi the beetles, some um, of this is lot of the. And here some scarabida beetles, and here some weevils, weevils from Curculeanidae. And very important, I forgot to say, making this collection, don't forget about this important stuff. If you are making collection, if you are making observation, don't forget you need to have observation diary, diary of your observations. This is very important where you can write date and your observation where you indicate temperature, plants, place of collecting, because later you will forget it all small tiny details and peculiarities of behavior which you just observed with different things. Collecting boxes can be big size and this is my maybe first wooden box. This is from art, art box used for, for, for painters. So here are some bees, my old 
from my old collection, which I collected just in university. Some be still here with labels. I sorted them and put in different places, but it was used actually originally for art painting for different colors and paintings here. So this is a, such a big box, not for exposition, but must be closed very toughly, very carefully, without any crevices, or you can use, you must use maybe here, scotch to color it and protect for protection against insects who can eat it inside. But this is a separate video. So this is exposition, for example, with different bees, hornets, bumblebees, yeah, here small bumblebees, wild bees, especially you need to indicate to have some labels and different groups. This is also exposition collection. And educational, this one, educational collection with a hornet or European, for example, we don't have Asian hornet uh, Vespa mandarina yet. We don't have a Vespa velutina yet, but when we will have Vespa velutina, I will create a big collection like this with Vespa velutina, which is invasive species and which is in going to invade different countries in Europe step by step, year by year. And sooner or later it will come to the east because of a global warming of climate. And they're coming, coming, coming to different countries, 100 or more kilometers every, every year. So here this is hornet nest and different workers and some big even some huge, I would say, some huge queens of hornets. And here's some exposition about honeybees, honeybees and some hornets as well. So here's some workers, some queens, some drones, some wasps, German wasps, some big hornets, and here some pieces of combs and queen cells, queen cells, and here for comparison some wild bees of Andronidae family. So, for example, this is a small piece of my educational collection, which I, but this is only a small piece. Usually people have many, many drawers, many, many boxes and of course finally I show you admiration of insects when people keep in different insects as a living stock living stock it means if you like insects and you have a possibility to keep insects in house or just in laboratory for their study for example here I have piece of wood and this is a piece of wood with the Zaphobus. Zaphobus, this is a tiny larvae. Tiny larvae, not tiny larvae, very big larvae. I say tiny. Some people worry about it, but they are not dangerous. I showed them in my video. I showed how to breed them, how to keep it uh, this stock. But peculiarities of biology, about peculiarities how to feed them with a different food, how to keep them safe. And you see here, they're safely sitting here and eating just this and just biting, not biting. They have no sting, no bite. They're eating this rotten wood old wood, actually not rotten. And of course, some people need to keep this technical collection for the study, or maybe to use these insects for like uh, food for another animals, another small vertebrates, or, or invertebrates like spiders. I don't have 
too much spiders in my collection because mostly I have insects. Like here, finally I show you small, as I said about Zaphobos. So we're sitting here. Some of these big beetle, Zaphobos beetles. From time to time, I'm telling you the story about these beetles, how to keep their culture. So this was a story about different type of collections, different type, type of admiration of insects, and when it was started usually for amateurs and entomologists. So I'm very pleased that you came to this video stream. Of course, it would be it was recorded and it will be repeated on my web page on my YouTube channel. And write in your comments which insects are you keeping on yourself, which insects are more the most interesting for you, which groups of insects is the most interesting for you: Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths, beetles, grasshoppers, cockroaches, larvae maybe you aquatic beetles, maybe caterpillars, maybe you're just breeding caterpillars in your country, in your city, in your village. Please share your experience, share your interest. It will be very interesting. Maybe you have interesting subject and interesting knowledge to share it with another people. So if you have some questions, we, I am very pleased to communicate with you on my email, on computer, on my Skype, so we can communicate on Facebook. We can exchange by some photographs. So if you have some photographs, I will be very pleased to show you, uh, to show you your photographs for another people if you like to share it. So you can send some photographs for me by email or through Facebook. It's even easier on Facebook. So, and I can show you it for other people, so you can share your knowledge and we can discuss what was uh, this insect, why this insect, if you collected insect spider or mite near your house, in your countryside house, and you are interested to know what is it, send in initially me your photographs, maybe you can send some um, boxes with insects for study under the microscope, which will be more precisely, precisely, more correct identification. But for initially, just take photo, take photo, maybe take a small video if you have a zoom, if you have zoom, better magnification, bigger magnification, and send it on my email. My email, you can see under this video, written under this video, Ufensia gmail.com, Ufensia gmail.com, or my Skype, Zemi slash down slash sun, Zemi sent sun. Email Ufensia dog gmail.com and Skype, Zemi, Zemi slash sun. So, and of course, I will be very pleased to cooperate, communicate with you, and discuss all these questions all together with you. And write, what is your favorite insect? Because today this was my recording more without actually online communication with people. I'm not sure, maybe no people or just no con con contact. So if you write it in comments, because uh, my audience is Russian speaking audience, Ukrainian speaking audience and English speaking audience. But I know that many people in other countries watching me in English language. So write your comments in, down there under this video. And don't forget if you visit my visited my stream, my this video first time, subscribe to my channel and click on bell just near the, this part of a screen. So you will receive some notification. And comment or like is the most pleasant. Because comment, I see 
to the person who just commented it. But the difficulty, you need to be on Gmail. You register it on Gmail. Or you can drop me email on my email. Thank you for watching. Okay, I was very pleased to tell you about admiration, obsession, love and to insects and entomology. Love to spiders, love to mites. And I will follow your interest. I will follow my interest. And I will continue to show you more interesting, more new stories about entomology and about collections as well. I know that many people like to have this have discussion about collection. So thank you for watching. Press like and see you soon on my channel. Bye bye. Good luck. Subscribe and write your comments.